Hello, this is an assessment in transit of a chapel, new style grand piano, five foot long. And uh, we're assessing it, it's moving from A to B and the client's asked us to assess it to see what sort of work might need doing on it or whether it's feasible to work on the piano at all. Wonderful model of British piano, it's one of my favourites. And I think the casters have been changed here. These are brand new casters. I suspect that it might, may have been uh, with an A-frame or something similar because it's been in a uh, large church apparently. Uh, the pedals here are extremely worn. If we look at the right-hand pedal, I don't think I've seen anything more worn than that. Um, it's just the surface, is obviously this metal has not, not been man enough for the job, but the right-hand pedal often wears a lot more. You can tell how much the piano has been used by the wear on the right-hand pedal. I think we'd have to replace both pedals if we're going to um, get a good match. Underneath the piano looks fine apart from that. The key tops are uh, ivory um, and uh, you can see they some have come off and been stuck back on in the middle here, um, quite worn. Nowadays we often replace ivories because it's getting more and more difficult. Um, well, we have to have a certificate to sell a piano with ivory anyway if we're selling one. And uh, if it's going abroad very often they need replacing. Looking at the casework, it's a rosewood, very attractive rosewood. Um, this is a gate leg. Uh, new style chapel. Most of them are, are just single turned legs, um, are the, not gate leg style or uh, that, like that. So looking around the rest of the casework, the, that side is quite dark. Um, certainly would repolish beautifully if it was fully repolished. Um, this would bring out a lot more grain contrast here. It's covering over the, the, the grain. Um, we've got plenty of videos of French polishing if you're interested to see what it looks like. And this is very damaged. It's, as I say, it's been in a large church and obviously doesn't seem to have been cared for too well. Um, maybe before that, I don't want to blame the church necessarily. Um, apparently it was played by Britain, so I was told, which is interesting. And uh, th there's a watermark there. So really, the, the top of the piano, well, the whole piano needs repolishing. Um, I, I would suggest you can't really make good at all. There's bits of veneer missing here. I think there's bits of veneer missing on, on this side too, if I remember rightly. Yes, there's quite a lot of veneer missing there. So that's uh, obviously a lot of work to get that repaired and, and repolished. More than usual, I would say. Uh, repolishing takes 70 hours, so that's probably going to take a bit longer. And the music sounds original. This, this doesn't have a, a backstay here for propping at the music desk and I mentioned this just recently because the problem is uh, this is a fo forward folding one uh, as Steinways, old Steinways are but they've got a, a prop here at least that protects it a bit but the problem is you can end up breaking these hinges by pushing it back and it's uh, seen that two or three times that people have pushed this backwards thinking it would fold back like a lot of grands do and not fold forwards. Um, and also obviously putting pressure on here you could do with the backstay to stop it stop the hinges uh, breaking here they're quite man quite strong hinges it's a well designed piano in many aspects it's not really been worked on too much and there's a string missing at the top here um, and there's also um, a string missing here so i think this uh, could do it needs restringing as we'll see in a minute the reason it needs restringing is one damper replaced here um, so it's been maintained to a certain extent, but really needs fully restoring. Now these original tuning pins, uh, they're quite loose, some of them. If you try and reset them, I've mentioned that about resetting before, you can just tap it in slightly and uh, hold it with a pin resetter. This is a pin resetter used to hold it so it doesn't turn when you're knocking the top of it. Then just to roughen up the wood, if it's been tuned a lot, then it, it gradually gets a groove, as it were, so you can roughen it up by just pushing it in a bit. Um, but it's clicky. Uh, I'll see if you can hear that. So if I turn it, it clicks, and it makes it very, very hard to, to set in tune. It's a, it's, a, it's a real nuisance if you're trying to tune your piano with clicky pins. It is possible, but uh, very unpleasant. So that just makes it hard to keep to, to tune accurately. Um, so the rest plank, therefore, is I don't know what's happened, whether some liquid's got into it or it just happens to have got clicky over the years, but um, it's needing replacement. So 
the only way of curing that is to replace the rest plank. I've tried putting bigger pins in before, it still ends up clicky. Um, if you've had experience of that, it'd be really useful to know. There's where it says New Style Chapel. Um, a certain style of theirs from, I don't know, about 1900 possibly, maybe slightly earlier. Um, and uh, if you're experiencing in the trade, please let me know. But they're mostly turned, uh, three turned legs, but this one's got uh, gate legs. So the soundboard looks reasonable and generally in good condition. The, the tuning pins are definitely, well, they're, they're loose and they're, they're originals. So you need to replace the rest flank and then restring the whole piano. And at the same time, we'd recondition the soundboard. And I think re repolish the frame to rather respray the frame. Um, it would be a shame not to do that. This isn't terribly bad, but uh, it, certainly if everything looks looks brand new as it were then it would be good to do the frame then you'd repolish the whole piano so we're talking about full rest full restoration i'm just going to take the action out and i want to mention something here this is held on by screws underneath this front rail um it should normally in a lot of british pianos are like this they have screws in the in the front which is uh, just time consuming for piano tuners to take out and in fact one of them was missing here um so it should, uh, should be a lip here really to hold hold this cheek on and then you don't need screws in the front row. Now here's a Bersendorfer Grand and this typical good quality Grand. So good makes a piano and the chapel's an excellent piano but should have a little lip here which you can then, uh, it, it fits in like a dovetail in, in a sense and just fits in nicely there and you don't need anything on the front row. Oddly enough Feuerich Grands which are wonderful new Grand pianos uh, also have a screw underneath here which is unnecessary because they have a lip here. So I don't think it's necessary anyway. If you want to comment please do. Uh, I should emphasise actually the keys do need replacing really because they're, they're extremely worn here. We don't can't really make this good satisfactorily without replacing the key top, so they would we'd lose its ivory keys. But um, that's an advantage nowadays in many respects. Now look at the action of the piano. It's well, it's a well-made action. Uh, there's interesting repairs here on the chasers. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that before. These chasers often split, and obviously that's a repair. And there's there's two, two others fur, further along the piano. Uh, don't see any evidence of other chasers splitting. And perfectly satisfactory, I would think. It's going to add weight front and back here. Um, obviously not perfect, but um, certainly we would try and repair the chasers. It's possible to do that if you've got uh, strong glue. You can we use what. We get our glue from Renner, who are action makers, and uh, that, that's really manned for the job. Uh, the felts themselves don't seem to be too worn, but uh, there's lots of wear in the piano. Let's just pull the action out, and the hammers are too far away. This about 51. Uh, they, they they could go do with going up. We've mentioned this many times before. The rollers are the culprit here. They've gone very flat. So we would change the hammers, shanks, and rollers because these have been refaced. The tone isn't too bad. Uh, they're a bit thinner than they were originally and the refacing is not done too badly either. In fact, it's very well done. Um, you can tell it's been refaced by the fluffy looking, fluffy look here. So the original hammer's refaced and a reasonable job done on that. And uh, it needs a bit of voicing, but these, these, could, these need to be above this rail and they will be. Um, the hammer blow needs to be lessened basically. But the, the hammers are, are, are worn and the touch is very light as a result. This, this style of action is very, works re extremely well. Slightly different design from the normal, what we see in a runner action these days. I'm going quite fast just to try and get lots of uh, points in and not to make the video too long. But the, this is a very good adjustment for the spring, which is you get on Becksteins and uh, our favorite style really, because it's easier to adjust than the Steinway style. Um, some Steinways nowadays have a, have a adjustment screw too, which is very helpful. Now listen to the tone of the piano. It's, it's warm and it's rich. Two adjectives often apply to, to, to good tone. It's a strong tone too. Just here, the break point, which is often a, a, a problem, Beckstein very often have a problem at this point, where uh, I think possibly if we restring it, we could uh, raise the down bearing slightly, and that might improve it. This down bearing should be greatest at this point. The, that, the down bearing is the pressure um, that is exerted on the sound, but it's slightly higher at this point. This is kind of like a hill, and then the sound will distribute properly around the soundboard. Every other note, nice and rich. for that one so I might be able to improve that 
I'm not sure we can get rid of it. Oh, that's the one I, I tested earlier. And warm tone in the bass. So it's, it's, a, it's one of my favourite British pianos, really. Um, this one's had more wear than, than average, and uh, uh, obviously not, it needs repolishing as well. And with the clicky pins, it's a real nuisance. It would turn out an excellent piano. Um, if uh, if the, it's very expensive and you can't recoup the amount spent on this piano if you wanted to resell it, or very unlikely to. So um, we, we would always allow the amount that you pay for the assessment if you're interested in having a piano assessed. We'll take off any piano that we've got in stock or, or we'll try and help you whichever, whatever way. We do charge for the assessment because obviously uh, sometimes we don't get the work. But, um, we would like to like to work on this piano, um, but would understand if you felt it wasn't cost effective. Actually, I've just noticed a broken key here. So these these, these repairs here weren't just the chaser; it was because the key was broken. I should have thought about that, uh, but the key here is broken, and uh, obviously needs repairing. I would have to check them all, see which other ones might be broke be breaking. It's very unusual for keys to break like that. So. Um, that's obviously something that needs to be checked thoroughly. Just going to give a brief comparison of the tone of this chapel, which obviously hasn't been restored yet, uh, compared to the Buzzendorf, which is next to it. It's a very bright, beautiful sound, I think. One, once it's got new hammers, new strings, it will sound excellent. Here's the Buzzendorf from 1927, 170 centimetres, so it's a longer piano. It's always best to get a longer piano if you can, because the tone is going to be bigger, and uh, especially the bass. So here's the assessment sheet of the, for the piano, and I think I've covered most of it. Um, a lot of extensive work, really. The, the number was on the fall, by the way, underneath it. I couldn't find it for a while, and uh, you often find that the number's underneath the fall. Uh, 90, it dates it to 1908, and it's a rosewood uh, cabinet, so it will repolish beautifully. The ivory is very worn, 85 keys, by the way. Um, the, the piano is five foot long, or 150, four foot 11. The legroom is only 58.5 at the moment, but that's because it's had small casters. Put, uh, the casters have been changed. The pedals are, are very, very low, four centimetres. So you could put caster cups underneath an inch caster cups to bring it up to a reasonable height. If you're tall, then that would be a problem for you to play the piano because it's very low. And the, the caster height, the seven centimetres is quite normal. So you could bring the casters up uh, hugely by placing them on, on something. Uh, cast cuts wouldn't be fast enough, I don't think. So it's uh, apparently previously come from a large church in Bury St Edmunds and played by Britain. Uh, so that's interesting history. And no backstay on the music desk and very worn pedal. Uh, those are some just some specific comments I thought was worth making. Hammer hinges are, are worn. I didn't mention that, but uh, hammer shanks and rollers need changing for that reason too. I, I would suggest, and the treble break I mentioned was varied, so you might be able to improve that. It's not disastrous, but it's just something we would try to get improved if we if we could. Uh, so main work was repra replace the rest blank. There were jumpy pins, so we really need to do that and repin and restring, recap the bridge, replace hammers, shanks, and rollers. There's a lot of work to do, and if we replush it as well, uh, it, it will turn out to be a, a very fine piano if that was done. So it's not that it's not worth doing, except if you try to resell the piano, um, that would be very difficult. Currently, the, um, to re resell it for this kind of price that you paid for the restoration, 42 gram down weight here. I didn't bother to measure many of them because if we change hammer shanks and rollers, that would obviously we reset that at 50 roughly, um, 47 to 50. 38 is incredibly light. Well, that's because it's been refaced and used a lot. And uh, so the piano is needing reweighting. Interesting enough, the weight down there is very heavy. So I think I've said enough. I'll just, uh, just quickly listen to the piano. That's a new style chapel grand piano, 150 centimeters long, or, or possibly five foot. Um, and 
I've always loved these grand pianos. This particular one is very worn, very used, and certainly needs extensive res restoration. But you can hear the underlying beautiful tone. It's a much brighter sound than the Bösendorfer, typically bright. It's perhaps an unfair comparison with the Bösendorfer because that's ready to go, that's all finished off. For, whereas this needs a restoration. But having said that, um, you can hear the potential, hopefully. So those, some keys are broken. I think that one might be as well. And that's very unusual. So obviously we'll look into that and see if any of them are beginning to break. So I hope that's been helpful. If you're having a want a piano restore, uh, uh, assess when it's moving from A to B, we're quite happy to do that. We do have to charge for the assessment because uh, in this case, uh, you may consider that the works, the client may consider the works not worth doing because of the expense, but and you could buy a Bösendorfer instead. I'm not trying to sell the Bösendorfer particularly, that's actually sold, I think. So um, just trying to say that um, we, we will buy and sell pianos that we know have a value after it's been restored, uh, commensurate with the amount of time spent on restoring the piano, if that makes sense. Well, this is a beautiful sound. Replace the rest blank, um, it'll annoy all tuners. Uh, if you're a tuner, you can comment on that. There's nothing more frustrating than tuning a piano with clicking tuning pins. Um, and I've experienced myself, maybe you've got, maybe you could help actually with that, because I found that whatever you do, it seems to be the tuning pins stay clicky. You can replace them. But um, if you've got other ideas, Obviously, we want to try and do things economically, but to do this job properly needs a new rest bank, is my belief. So, thank you very much for listening. I hope that's been helpful. If you're interested in having a piano restored, please do write to info at robertspianos.com. <laughs>